Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're taking a look at AMD's Fluid Motion Frames technology, otherwise known as AFMF. This is a driver-based implementation of frame generation that allows you to use the technology with any game you like. It simply takes the current and previous frames as output from the game and interpolates a new frame between them without any interaction from the game itself, thus ensuring broad compatibility with many games that haven't integrated frame generation already through FSR3 or DLSS3. Without game integration though, AFMF is presented with a few challenges compared to AMD's FSR3 frame generation technology. It can't use motion vectors to determine where various elements will be in the next frame, and it can't decouple the UI rendering loop from the frame generation loop. Essentially, with AFMF, everything you see on screen is put into an optical flow interpolation algorithm, which makes it much more difficult to produce a clean output relative to FSR3 as it simply has less data to go off. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Zemaboard, the world's first hackable single board server for creators starting at just $120 US. It's created by people who grew tired of reoccurring fees, unfriendly presets, and isolated systems, so they set out to make the home digital experience more attractive and more affordable. Zemaboard has the expandability of an x86 SBC with the power of a micro server. It allows you to set up a 4 terabyte personal cloud in 5 minutes, configure a secure VPN to protect your digital footprint, tune your network with OpenWRT and PFSense, build a 4K media server that runs with Plex, share and collaborate with with team members on your files or upgrade your smart projects across different systems. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. AFMF is currently available as a preview through a special driver AMD have made available for Radeon RX 7000 and RX 6000 series graphics card owners. So unlike FSR 3, which is integrated into games as a full stable release version right now, AFMF is being presented as more of a beta version, which is absolutely the right move when you look at the list of known issues and caveats. For a start, AFMF only works with DirectX 11 and 12 titles, which does encompass most PC games, but won't work with Vulkan, for example, so hopefully that will be added in later. Crucially though, it requires a very specific configuration to work. The game must be run in a full screen mode with HDR disabled and VSync disabled for now. No HDR support is a huge bummer given the emergence of PC HDR gaming over the last few years, and no vSync support means you will experience screen tearing if the final output frame rate exceeds your monitor's refresh rate, or if you don't have a variable refresh rate display. These are significant drawbacks that AMD are aware of, and is likely why this is being released as only a preview technology right now. You also have to download this specific preview driver to access AFMF, as it hasn't made it across to the main driver branch yet. It's very much something for enthusiasts that want to try it out ahead of a full release later on. When it comes to the quality of fluid motion frames, there are several issues to go over. Like with FSR3 frame generation that's integrated into games themselves, AFMF has issues with frame pacing, even when used with the configuration that AMD recommends, vSync disabled. To see this in action, I captured some footage using an external capture card at 1440p 120fps, with the game running at a render frame rate of 75fps, leading to an output frame rate of 150fps after frame generation. What we end up seeing on screen is an issue where the generated frames appear for too long, with each real frame only briefly flickering on screen. This is visible when stepping through each frame from the captured footage. In this example, we start with a mostly blurry generated frame. The next frame has the top portion of the screen blurry, indicating that it is still a generated frame. The middle section after the screen tear is clearer, that's a real frame, and then towards the bottom it's blurry again, a generated frame. This shows that only for a short period of the refresh cycle is the real frame being displayed. It's quickly shown here, then replaced by the next generated frame as the refresh cycle continues. What should be happening is the real frame should be displayed for a much longer period of time, increasing the area of the screen between tears that is from a clear real frame, pacing out these frames in a more consistent fashion. As we continue to move through the footage, this is a consistent issue, and it's not just from this game, it happened in every game that I assessed on AMD's flagship Radeon RX 7900 XTX. The end result is that when the game's frame rate exceeds your monitor's refresh rate and tearing occurs, because AFMF only supports vSync off, the vast majority of the time you are seeing only generated frames, and this makes visual artifacts significantly more visible than they otherwise should be. 
What's very interesting here is that this issue is not present when capturing footage locally using AMD's built-in Relive Capture utility. As Relive captures every full frame once they are complete, we end up with locally captured footage that is largely paced correctly, though there are occasions where Relive fails to capture the generated frame, so it too is an inaccurate reflection of how the technology should properly work. When viewing capture card footage, what you actually see on the screen, side by side with locally captured footage from Relive, the differences are very clear. I only noticed this because the Relive footage had noticeably fewer artifacts than what I was actually seeing on screen, so this is just something to be aware of if you want to share footage of AFMF. If you're capturing it locally, it may not be representative of the real experience you were seeing on screen. When running AFMF on a variable refresh rate display inside the monitor's refresh rate range, say 120 FPS on a 160Hz monitor, you end up with a similar experience but with no screen tearing. Each frame is paced erratically to the display, causing large refresh rate fluctuations, as each generated frame is typically displayed for a longer period of time than each real frame. There is usually a mismatch between monitor refresh rate and output frame rate, as we saw with FSR3. So it seems that AMD have a lot of work to do with frame pacing, not just for FSR3, but AMD. AFMF as well. This poor frame pacing significantly affects the experience because the output image quality ends up looking awful. You aren't supposed to see generated frames all or most of the time. You are supposed to have generated frames interlaced between normally rendered frames. This reduces the time each generated frame is being shown, making artifacts less visible. The faster this interlacing occurs, the more your brain is fooled into not noticing any issues. This is why higher output frame rates are preferable for frame generation. Because of this frame pacing problem, my experience with AFMF was generally blurry, garbled, jittery, and unpleasant to use, with screen tearing as well if the frame rate exceeded my max refresh rate. When viewing my local captures that show what I assume AFMF is supposed to look like, it's a mixed bag. The issues with generated frames are less noticeable when frame pacing works as intended, although as I said, some frames are clearly missing from these captured outputs, so there's no real way to show the ideal AFMF output right now. But with proper frame pacing, AFMF looks better than its current state. However, that's not to say AFMF looks good, because the quality of generated frames is pretty terrible. Without motion vectors telling the algorithm where each element on screen is moving to in the next frame, the entirety of each frame is put through an optical flow system. Unless the amount of motion between each frame is small, this interpolation process creates an output frame of poor quality. Fine details are significantly blurred in motion, and occasionally you see almost a double image type of effect where it looks like the previous and next frames are shown on top of each other with the transparency to blend them. We do see this sort of blurring and reduction to detail and motion in FSR3 generated frames as well, but typically it's localized just to areas of the screen that cannot be interpolated through motion vector data alone. With AFMF, it's the entire frame every single time. This is very noticeable when comparing the output of AFMF with FSR3 frame generation side by side in a game like Forspoken. As I talked about in my FSR3 video, the actual quality of FSR3 generated frames is acceptable. Usually they're pretty clear and free of issues unless we look at specific pain points for the interpolation tech. The quality of AFMF frames is noticeably worse. It's much blurrier, it lacks any areas of clean image generation in motion. The experience you get at the end of the day I would describe as half-rate motion blur. When motion blur is disabled in the game, AFMF is slotting blurry generated frames between clean real frames. So when playing the game in motion, you get this pattern of clear frame, blurry frame, clear frame, blurry frame, that looks like a weird low quality motion blur effect. I say low quality because typically motion blur in a game, especially with modern techniques, looks pretty good in how it implements the blur. I personally don't like motion blur and I turn it off, but the actual blur quality is respectable. Blur from optical flow frame interpolation is of a lower quality as it's unintentional. It's more a byproduct of what the algorithm is attempting to do. Aside from the typical low quality of each generated frame, AFMF really struggles with UI elements and this leads to obvious garbling and interpolation issues similar to what we saw with early DLSS3 frame generation implementations, if not worse in many instances. AFMF simply has no idea what is a UI element or text element on screen, it has no idea if you are in a game menu or not, so it's constantly generating frames and trying to optical flow interpolate UI elements even when it shouldn't be. 
Depending on the type of game you are playing, this ranges from mildly annoying to a real distraction. Games with crosshairs can be especially problematic as the crosshair element can cause garbling around it in generated frames. I also had plenty of issues with in-game menus, especially those with clean text and fine lines, such as the Starfield UI. When combined with the low quality blurry nature of AFMF frames, the UI generated issues undermine the overall quality of the game's presentation. AMD mitigates some of these issues by disabling frame generation during fast motion, which appears to mean whenever there is significant mouse or controller input. However, this introduces its own set of issues and is very inconsistent between games. Some titles will rarely disable frame generation, even with fast motion and significant mouse input. Other games have almost a hair trigger and will disable frame generation even from relatively minor movement. The DPI setting on your mouse can also have a big impact on how often frame generation is disabled, with a lower DPI more often triggering the dynamic system and thus disabling frame gen. I can see why AMD has implemented this system. The larger the difference between frames, the more likely the optical flow system will generate a garbage frame, and as larger differences are caused by faster motion, disabling frame generation when the difference between a frame is large will prevent those frames from being shown. That's the idea at least. In practice, I don't like how this makes games feel. The whole point of frame generation is to increase a game's smoothness. When you have frame generation turning itself off whenever there's fast motion, there's no increase to smoothness when you most need it. The game also ends up fluctuating between enhanced smoothness and reduced smoothness as frame generation turns on and off, which can be jarring and just doesn't feel very good. Especially when the base frame rate was around 70 FPS, the minimum AMD suggests for 1440p displays, jumping from 140 FPS down to 70 FPS when I panned around the camera felt very noticeable. The final issue with AFMF is input latency. Typically using this feature will increase input latency relative to not using it, which cannot be mitigated by using anti-lag plus. In Immortals of Avium, using the FSR3 quality upscaling mode, I went from 71 FPS with FMF off to 120 FPS with FMF on. However, this increased latency from 122 to 146 milliseconds. Using Anti-Lag Plus only brought that down to 134 milliseconds of latency, compared to 89 milliseconds using Anti-Lag Plus without fluid motion frames. The game's built-in FSR3 implementation had a noticeable latency advantage, delivering roughly the same output frame rate but at 107 milliseconds of latency compared to 134 milliseconds comparing best case versus best case. This means gamers wanting to use AFMF will have to sacrifice some latency to add in the generated frames, which does make sense as there is a performance cost to using AFMF which reduces the native render rate of the game, and the latency we see with frame generation enabled is linked to the native render rate. However, this latency increase is larger than what we see when FSR3 is used, as FSR3 has some built-in latency reducing tech, whereas AFMF does not. AMD acknowledged that AFMF can introduce additional latency and says it won't be optimal for fast-paced competitive titles, which I definitely agree with. Overall, it's fair to say that I haven't been impressed by AMD's Fluid Motion Frames technology in its current implementation. There's actually very little I like about how this works, and I can't see myself using it to play games under any circumstance. Having now played a dozen games with driver side frame generation enabled, I just simply did not prefer the AFMF experience compared to the native experience, and this is not a replacement for integrating FSR3 frame generation into games themselves. There are already issues with frame generation that limit its effectiveness that we've described in detail previously. You need a relatively high base frame rate to minimize artifacts, and as generated frames do not factor in game input, frame generation does not improve latency in the way a higher native render rate does. This makes frame generation a technology that's only capable of improving the visual quality of a game, not its overall performance. With FSR3 and DLSS3 frame generation, the visual improvements we get are twofold. As more frames are being presented on your display, the smoothness of the presentation improves. 
And as the quality of these generated frames is typically quite reasonable with relatively clear details thanks to the data provided by motion vectors, frame generation can actually deliver a clearer overall experience in motion and help alleviate the blur associated with sample and hold displays. These are the typical visual benefits we see from any increase to game frame rate, and while frame generation isn't as good as natively rendering a higher frame rate, the improvements are noticeable over running at a lower frame rate. In a recent podcast episode, we described this benefit as reverse motion blur. Historically, games have used motion blur to smear the image and increase its apparent smoothness, hiding the fact the game is being run at a low frame rate. With frame generation, it's possible to hide a game's lowish frame rate without just making the presentation blurry. We almost get the opposite effect, where we increase smoothness and clarity, hence reverse motion blur. The problem with AFMF is that these generated frames do not increase clarity in motion because the quality of these frames is quite bad. It's often blurry or garbled and has major issues with game UI. This largely defeats the purpose of frame generation in my opinion. Yes, you get improved smoothness, but what's the point when it noticeably reduces visual quality to do so? Given you already need to start at 55 to 70 FPS according to AMD, and AFMF actually hurts latency when it's enabled, you would be better off just using motion blur to improve the apparent smoothness of the game, and in-game motion blur preserves UI quality as it's not applied to the entire frame. On top of this, AFMF also defeats the purpose of frame generation by switching off dynamically during fast motion, which is actually where you're most likely to want to have the additional smoothness of frame generation. There are all sorts of other issues as well with the current implementation, like frame pacing issues and a lack of compatibility with vSync and HDR. Now AMD has some leeway here because this is clearly labelled as a preview technology and right now AMD are not using AFMF to market graphics cards. You aren't being sold a new Radeon GPU based on the promise that AFMF delivers an excellent experience that's worth paying for. It's not even available in the main driver branch and they are clearly planning to resolve some of the issues with configuration compatibility. But the biggest issue with AFMF to me is the quality of interpolated frames. Can AMD improve the quality to the point where it isn't so blurry and handles UI correctly? I have my doubts, and without a significant improvement to these areas, I just can't see myself ever using it. I'm not interested in pumping up my FPS counter and getting low quality crappy frames every second frame in return. That's not the experience that I want while gaming. It's now over to AMD to improve the feature, and I'll be interested to see where it ends up after it exits preview status. I don't have particularly high hopes, and would rather see resources put into improving FSR3 frame generation and FSR upscaling, but AMD might be able to surprise me if the long list of issues can be resolved. Anyway, that's it for this look at AMD's Fluid Motion Frames technology. If you do appreciate these looks into this and also FSR3, which we covered on the channel previously, then please do consider supporting us directly via our Patreon or Flip Plane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to some cool benefits and bonuses as well, like our Discord community and monthly live stream. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.